So I've had some time to jump into the Halo Infinite multiplayer beta and there's some really awesome things about this game and also some things that need a lot of work. So in this video we're going to go over my impressions of Halo Infinite's multiplayer right now. So stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. How's it going everybody? Kevin here. Welcome to the channel. The channel that keeps you updated with everything going on with Halo. And we're going to be talking about our first impressions with Halo Infinite. I've played all the flights. I've played this beta right now as well. This is the full multiplayer experience pretty much guys. You know, I mean, you might be seeing some minor changes with the full release on December 8th, but for the most part, this is the multiplayer experience. And I've been asked the question a million times already. How am I enjoying Halo Infinite? Well, this video is gonna answer just that. We're gonna be talking about the weapons, we're gonna be talking about the maps, the game modes, the progression system, which definitely needs some work in theater mode, which is a, a whole nother beast right there. So if you guys like the discussion type of videos, make sure to tap that like button. Let me know you wanna see some more content like this. If you wanna stay up to date with everything going on with Halo as we wrap up to the full release of the game on December 8th, make sure you tap subscribe. So let's get right into the content here. So I think the first thing we'll talk about here are the maps. Maps are super important to a good multiplayer experience. And from what I've played so far, I've had a chance to play all the maps and I like all the maps in the game. Right now there are 10 maps, so it's kind of a smaller map pool with three of those being dedicated to B2B, the other seven being dedicated to 4v4, which I think there's one map in particular that doesn't really fit. But from my experience, all the maps are good. There are no bad maps in this game. There's no obvious map like, oh my god, this one is terrible, get it out of the rotation. There's no like sword base to say or something like that. Uh, they're all fun, they're very, all very well thought out, very thematic, very different, and very looking at the same time. So you don't feel that repetition of playing the same maps over and over again because all of them have their own theme and feel to them. The only map I feel like it's kind of out of place is the map launch site, which is a 4v4 map, which has vehicles on it, which I have no problem with. But the thing is that map just feels very large for a 4v4 map, but I think it might be too small for a 12v12 BTB. So it's kind of like in this awkward stage, if you maybe want to do like some custom games, you probably see that map probably doing really well, actually, honestly, with custom games, where you can have more customized mount players on the map and things like that. Uh, but for right now, the way it sits, it's a pretty slow paced map where a lot of times I'm kind of running around trying to find action where in these other maps out there, I just kind of play the game and I'm finding engagements no problem. And it's really fun to play and really high action and really fast paced. And it's a great time. But on launch site, things seem to be pretty slow. Now 10 maps does feel a bit low, but personally for a launch, I do expect to see a much more core experience, kind of tight knit, trim the fat kind of thing when it comes to Halo Infinite's full launch. I actually kind of like a small map pool to start out with at first. I don't want to jump in with like 20 maps and have to learn all of these all at once. It'd be a bit overwhelming. So I like this kind of focus, kind of experience of make sure that if it's going to be put in the game, that's going to be good and all the maps are good. The BTB maps, even though there are only three Three of them right now are large and expansive enough to kind of like battlefield in a way where you don't need that many maps because these maps are so large and unique and there's so many different ways to play them that they don't get repetitive quickly now you can't have a first person shooter without your weapons and the weapons in this game are awesome like i didn't really have any bad experience with any kind of weapon where i was like oh my god not picking it up this is trash besides the plasma pistol which you talked about previously where i think the tracking on enemy spartans need, definitely needs to be buffed 343 says they're going to be looking into that as well hopefully it gets buffed before launch i played around with the commando that got a one shot nerf so it takes one extra bullet to take the kills and i definitely noticed that nerf it definitely felt less effective but i think i think it might fit better within the sandbox as well and it's still a good weapon don't get me wrong like if i'm playing btb and all i have is like a sidekick and an ar well i'm gonna be dropping that sidekick for commando because the range on the commando is so much better and it's hit scan so it makes it pretty easy to hit your shots as well so it's still a very effective weapon it just takes a little extra bit damage to get the kill i think the biggest discussion for the weapons you're going to see for this game is the assault rifle and i think a lot of people are going to be calling for the assault rifle to be nerfed but when they say nerf, you go, how? I think the assault rifle is in a really good spot right now. I will say it's a bit too powerful, but like slightly too powerful. Where the only way I would ever nerf this weapon is maybe hitting the max spread faster would be the best way to go about doing it rather than doing less damage or something like that. Maybe like one bullet less damage or something like that if you wanted to nerf it like that. Uh, very minor changes, I think, is what all the sandbox really needs. There's nothing in the sandbox for weapon-wise that's clearly overpowered, clearly broken, needs to be fixed, and things like that. That's right now for my first impressions that the sandbox for the weapons 
is really well done. And for it to be a launch and being really well done is like kudos 343 on that one. I fully expect to see nerfs and buffs happening to these weapons by the time, you know, season two, three, and four roll in as well. So this is going to be a kind of a fluid kind of situation to see what weapons are good, what weapons are bad, uh, which ones are overpowered, which ones need to be buffed as well. There certainly are those weapons out there in the sandbox, but nothing glaring. Now, what's the point of having awesome maps and awesome guns if you don't have awesome game modes to play with? And the game modes right now is a pretty core experience of what I expect for a Halo game. Uh, if you're kind of a fan who likes more kind of niche experiences like Griffball, Race, Infection, and things like that, you might have to wait until the full release of the game. Because right now we have Slayer, CTF, Neutral Flag, One Flag, Strongholds, Oddball, Stockpile, and Total Control. Those last two for BTP exclusively. So I wouldn't call this necessarily bare bones, but I would say it's much more core to the experience of Halo. Where for me, for my way I like to play Halo, this is totally fine, because this is pretty much all I ever would like to play in Halo. But if you're a little bit more of a niche player, likes to jump into custom games, you might be a little disappointed. I love Total Control. I think it's one of the best game modes that's ever come to Halo. It's such a fun game mode. Nice take on like the Strongholds domination kind of game mode, but play differently, obviously. Stockpile, I got a chance to finally play, and basically why it works is you have these cores that drop on the map in specific areas. They rotate throughout the map as well where these drop locations are. You go to that location, you grab a core, take it back to your base, five cores, get you one point, first team to three points, wins the game. From my experience, it's such a crazy hectic mode because it really focuses the combat, like I'm thinking like one specific location. So I never really had an opportunity to grab a core because there's just so much chaos. Like I need to slay my way to get to that core, right? I'm not gonna just jump on and kill myself, you know? I did get a chance to grab a few cores, put them into the base as well. You can actually steal cores from other people's bases as well. It just takes a really long time. I say the timer's probably about 30 seconds. You have to hold down the button to actually steal the core. So it does take a long time, which is tough because if you're in the spawn, which is at their base, um, there's going to be a very rare occasion where you get to stand inside the base, stand and still completely without getting shot. So I like to see that steal time be like halved or something like that i like to see that be like a true like stealthy kind of a gameplay experience because it seems like it's really focused on taking the core bringing it to your base that's really the best way to play uh doing stealthy modes like stealing cores and things like that it's not really that effective and for the playlist that we have we have the bot mode which is four players versus bots we have quick play which has a variety of all these modes in there we have the hcs ranked mode as well and then btp pretty basic as well in fact even less than halo 5 which people criticize for not having enough game modes at launch personally i'd like to see the match composer for mcc come into halo infinite i think it's just the best way to go about doing this whole thing so people get to play how they want i mean steam population peaked at like 250,000 concurrent players at once so there's definitely enough people playing the games where you can do that of course this is the beta i'm sure with the full release we'll get some more types of game modes like swat infection more custom game options as well. So this is just the beta. So it's just kind of a core experience that we're gonna have right now for Halo until the full release. Customization right now is absolutely amazing. If you love customize customizing your Spartan, well, this is the Halo game for you. There's so many familiar ways and new ways to customize your Spartan, customize your weapon and customize your vehicles as well. Honestly, I've never really been one for customization a whole lot within Halo. I just kind of like playing the game and making my Spartan look just decent enough. I don't really care about the details. But in this game, I feel like I might take a little bit more pride in my online presence because the way the core system works, the different type of armor effects, and just all the extra types of customization are there. It's awesome. It's fun. I'm really excited about it. The one part of the customization that's kind of tied to it is, well, the monetization and the battle pass and challenge system for the progression. This is going to be the biggest topic of contention when it comes to this beta is everyone's going to be talking about progression. Everyone's going to be talking about it because it's really slow and pretty grindy. So in my experience, I put about like five hours of gameplay into Halo Infinite yesterday and I got like five and a half levels through the battle pass right there. I didn't optimize my double XP, so I probably could have gone up to six, maybe seven if I really optimized my game time with the double XP. But I worked out the math here and it's kind of concerning to think about how much you have to play to unlock everything, at least at the pace that I'm playing. So let's do a little math here, guys. So I put five hours into game time, got essentially six levels with Roundup if I doubled my, used my double XP better, and there are, are 100 levels. Levels, how long will it take me to get to level 100 in the battle pass? So how many times does 6 go into 100? So do 100 divided by 6 equals 16.666667. So 
it times that by five right there and that's how many hours it will take 83 hours for me to grind through the battle pass at the pace that i'm going right now now you do have to make sure to keep in mind that this is going to be every three months we're going to be new seasons as well so if we divide this by three it equals out to 27.7 basically 27.8 hours a month that I'll need to be playing of Halo Infinite to be able to unlock an entire battle pass within its season. So that's a legitimate part-time job to play Halo to unlock everything within the one season of a battle pass. Yes, the battle pass stays, it doesn't go away, but I kind of expect for me being a hardcore Halo player that I play regularly multiple times a week for, you know, five, 10 hours a month, a week, that uh, I would expect to be able to get through the battle pass in one season. 343 stated that they don't want to create a grind session, but this is kind of what Halo Infinite's looking like right now. And it's not like I was completely ignoring challenges either. Like if I had things like get a Ravager kill, I would do that. If get a specific type of kill doing this with like a commander or a battle rifle, yeah, no problem. Uh, some of them are a little more specific though, which kind of makes things a little tricky. Like one of my weekly challenges is to spot at least three enemies at once with one threat sensor. That's a very specific situation. That's kind of rare to one, find a threat sensor that has it on the map, and then two, have a cluster of players all at the same time. And for you casual players out there, which is most likely me or any player who just kind of jumps in and play, that's a pretty rare challenge to actually have completed. Also, the way the daily challenges work with play X amount of games, right? So I believe like the first three games is just play a game, you get XP. Boom, no problem with that. Then it goes play two games to get XP. Then play three games, then four games. I got up to five games to earn one drop of XP, which does seem a bit unfair. I feel like 343 found a way to nerf the streamers, essentially. This Reddit thread here has over 19,000 upvotes, so it's definitely the most upvoted thing on the Halo Reddit. Talking about how there must be per match XP, and I think this is going to be the biggest point of conversation we're going to have with Halo Infinite until the full release on December 8th. So one part, guys, that's going to need a lot of work before release is theater mode within Halo Infinite. This thing is kind of a mess. If you think, just think basically Halo 5. That's the kind of theater mode we have, but kind of about worse actually. So when I first load into this match right here, it goes to a random player within the game. This isn't my name at all. So now I need to scroll through to try to find my name within the game right here, which actually is not that big of a deal to start out with. So it's okay, but I just kind of take, you know, just kind of an inconvenience thing really. So it took me a few times to scroll through to find my name here, but at least we finally got it. And then let's kind of fast forward here a little bit till we get to actual gameplay here. You can kind of see that's really kind of choppy and jittery right there when you kind of go in and out of gameplay right here. So that's definitely an issue already with that. Uh, the same issue with Halo 5 where like the reticle doesn't line up to where you were shooting in game. That's still in here as well, which does affect a lot when it comes to like showcasing different kind of game modes and also just different kind of cool clips and things like that. I had this really cool moment happen in this game, guys. I really wanted to showcase to you all, but uh, the theater mode is just so dang janky. It's just so hard to come across it. But the one things I want to showcase here are definitely these markers on the timeline are a really great addition. Showcases your medals, showcases your kills, your deaths and things like that. You can even filter this kind of stuff out with your kills, deaths and modes or different kind of killing spots. If you want to just showcase your killing sprees or something like that, or if you want to showcase your different types of medals you earn, like your normal heroic, legendary, and mythic medals. So, this is really great. I love this feature when it comes to the theater mode of Halo Infinite. But uh, the functionality of it, uh, that's a completely different story. One thing here is so if I try to remove this UI in the upper right hand corner, it removes the entirety of the UI, which is really annoying. This one section here I want to showcase this is where I die, and it'll just randomly switch to another character within the game. With, you know, I'm still keeping my hands we're off the controller right now. We're going to see what happens right here. And if you take a look, I'll turn on my webcam so you can see hands are up right now. It just switched to another character in the game. Who is this guy? I don't know who this is. I don't know why it switched to that. And it's like in the weird, like first person, third person kind of angle. I don't know what's going on. So I need to go back into the UI, select through my names of all the players within the lobby right here. Finally get to this one right here and like, oh, okay, the, this is the cool clip that I really wanted to showcase. Let me press uh, skip back to go to the back to the full thing. Okay, there we go. I think I haven't quite got there yet. Let's go back to it. And oh, look, it goes back to the other player. So overall, the core gameplay of Halo Infinite is fantastic. The customization is fantastic. The maps are fantastic. The weapons are fantastic. Like the stuff that you need to get good is really good. Uh, the external stuff like the progression is not so great. And uh, the theater mode is 
basically pointless right now we'll see when the full launch happens guys i'll keep you guys updated when that does happen if we get updates when it comes to the theater mode especially as well as the progression system which is going to be the biggest talk in the in the community right now uh from my experience right now i'm really liking multiplayer i'm really enjoying playing it Halo infinite right now the quickest of the core gameplay experience that needs to like, be good is really good to me this is like halo 3 if halo 3 was made in 2021 this is how it would play let me know what your first impressions are in the comment section down below. If you're new to the channel and missing any content from me recently, check out this place right here. I got linked to all my Halo Infinite news and informational videos we've been uploading daily about. Thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.